Hello everyone, welcome to a mildly requested video on student accommodation at Imperial. This video is going to contain everything you need to know, prices, locations, good things, bad things about every single student hall. So without further ado, let's get started. Imperial will email you when accommodation applications open, which will be sometime in the beginning of summer. The first thing I want to tell you guys is that there is no rush to fill out the form quickly. It is not done on a first come first serve basis. They don't assign people to halls immediately. They only assign people to halls once the results come out, which is in the end of August. So I'll give you an overview about all the halls first of all. All of them are pretty new and modern. All of the halls have a year-long rent, so you don't have to move out in the Christmas holidays or in the Easter holidays. You can leave all your stuff there, but the contract doesn't include summer, so you can't stay there over the summer holidays. So the contract is normally for around 40 weeks. Rent includes all utilities, including Wi-Fi, water, gas, etc. There is a warden team in every hall, so that includes the warden, who is normally a professor, a member of staff at Imperial, sub-wardens who are PhD students, and and then whole seniors who are undergrads just like you. These people are there for pastoral care, planning events, if you get locked out of your room they can help you get back in, stuff like that. All of the halls are self-catered. There are all sorts of rooms such as en-suites, premium rooms which have double beds, twin rooms where you can have a roommate, and rooms that have communal bathrooms. So the halls I'm going to be talking you through today are the halls in Prince's Gardens, which include East Side and South Side, Bite Hall, Wilson House, Xenia, and then Woodward Costume Store and Kemp Porter, which is the new hall that they just built this year. So first I'm going to talk about the halls in Prince's Gardens, which are East Side and South Side. These are listed as separate halls when you apply to halls. The only difference is that East Side is slightly newer, it was built three years after South Side was built but they are pretty much the same thing. Due to the different times of them being built, Southside is slightly cheaper since it's a little bit older. These are the halls that I lived in when I was in first year, and the best thing about these halls is they are literally across the road from university, and a really big plus for me was that they were right next to the university gym. So one of the negatives about these halls is that they are kind of expensive. The rent can go up to £300 a week depending on what type of room you have. I had a roommate, so the rent was not too expensive for me. It was around £160 per week. However, this year, due to the circumstances of COVID-19, it will not be possible to have a roommate in any of the halls that Imperial provides. But don't worry, there are still loads of other great halls that are slightly cheaper. Another negative impression that people have about Eastside and Southside halls is that because they're the most expensive, they're known as the international halls. And the fact that this is classed as a negative thing is just a little bit racist. It was something that people would say to me, like, I would say, like, I live in Prince's Gardens and people would be like, oh, that's the international halls, like, there are international people everywhere at Imperial, so... I found the facilities really good. The bathroom we had in our room was really good. The kitchen was really good. I think there were about 30 people on my floor who were sharing one kitchen. The kitchen was pretty big, but it could still get kind of messy sometimes, which was a bit gross. And if you've seen my What's In My Sink videos, you'll know what it used to be like. If any of you guys can identify any of the unknown substances in yeah. my sink, Please huge. comment below. All the rooms in East Side and South Side are ensuite, so if you have a roommate, there will be an ensuite inside your room and you guys will just share the bathroom. So now I'm going to talk about Bite Hall. Bite Hall is also really close to university, literally across the road. It's right next to the Royal Albert Hall and is aesthetically very nice to look at. Obviously, I didn't live in any of these other halls, so I asked some of my friends for their opinions on what it was like living in the halls. So some of the good things about these halls were that the rooms are pretty large, it's obviously really close to university, so that's good and the kitchens are not overcrowded. I found that in Princess Gardens the kitchens were a little bit overcrowded, but that's not a problem in Bite. The way the Bite is built is that it's kind of a circle and there's a quad in the middle, and if you have a room facing inwards it can sometimes get a little bit noisy, especially in the summertime when people are at the Union a bit more and they're outside more. The Union Club is in Bite, so only over 18s can live in that building. And on the Imperial website, they make a pretty big deal about it being loud. Personally, I've never heard anybody complain about the club being loud. I feel like it's pretty well soundproofed. So Wilson House is an accommodation which is around the Paddington area. You can walk through Hyde Park to get to university or you can take the circle line. It takes about 30 minutes to walk to campus from there or you can do a 15 minute bike ride or you can take the tube which takes about 25 minutes. But you do have to take the circle line and there are a lot of different trains running on that line so you might have to wait maybe up to 10 minutes for the right train. Wilson House is made up of lots of houses that have been converted into one hall. Also I was told the kitchens are super dirty and overcrowded. Around 60 people share one kitchen which is a lot. But the location is really good, there's loads of stuff around Paddington, it's really nice to have a disconnect from university. In first year I spent all my time on campus and there was really like not much escape. 
it can be easier to explore London if you live a bit further away from university already. There is a gym nearby, St Mary's Gym, which costs £45 for the whole year. This is around the same price as the university gym, which costs £30 for the whole year. So that's really good. Everyone I spoke to who lived in Wilson House had a really good time there, made great friends, but my friend Christy said don't drink the tap water. So Xenia is a hall that is located in Waterloo. It's a great location if you want to explore London. You're right by the River Thames, you're near the Tate Modern, you're near the Globe, you're near the London Eye, the Houses of Parliament, there's so much stuff around you. And it's a really good place to live if you want to enjoy the experience of living in London to the fullest. The commute takes around 20 to 30 minutes depending on how busy the South Kent Tunnel is. For those of you who don't know, the South Kent Station has two exits. Um, one exit is right where the station is, when you come up the barriers there's an exit right there. But there is a tunnel that goes underneath Exhibition Road, which is the road that Imperial is on. And the end of that tunnel finishes right outside Imperial. And basically that tunnel gets super congested with people, especially around the morning. For Xenia and the other halls I'm going to talk about afterwards, it is pretty vital that you have a travel card. The travel card can cost £70 per month, depending on which zone you live in. And plus the London rent, sometimes that can get a little bit expensive. The walk to the tube station is only 5 minutes. And if you want to cycle into uni, it's also 30 minutes, so you don't save any time by cycling. So Xenia isn't really advertised as a hall that is noisy as such. But my friend told me on Tuesday nights, which is the ministry club night, that a lot of Imperial students go to, especially in first year. I know I went to every single ministry club night in first term of first year, so a lot of people go and Xenia is a 10 minute walk from ministry, so on Tuesdays it gets really loud and a lot of people come to Xenia to pre-drink before they go to the club. So it gets loud on Tuesdays, but you can cope with that. So now I'm going to talk about the halls in North Acton. These halls include Woodward, Costume Store and the new halls, Kemp Porter, which they just built this year. These halls are the newest halls at Imperial and they are also the cheapest halls. It takes about 40 minutes to get to university. It has a really good community since everyone is kind of out there together. It fosters a pretty caring community. The halls in North Acton are the largest halls. So it's really easy to find like a niche group of friends because there are so many people around. Again, a thing that people who don't live on campus, such as in Byte or in Princess Gardens halls, like is that there is a separation between uni and like home. The rooms are big and there's a great gym there. There are an Asda and a Little nearby which are a lot cheaper than the local supermarket in South Kent, I can say that for sure. My local supermarkets were a Waitrose and a Sainsbury's which were pretty expensive. The only bad thing about living in Woodward, Kent Porter and Costume Store is that it is obviously quite far away from university. It takes about 40 minutes to get to university from there, but you get used to it pretty quickly so I wouldn't worry about it. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was the option of not living in student halls and living in private accommodation immediately. I do know some people who did that and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about their experiences and why they chose to do that. So often if you have a friend who already lives in London that you really want to live with, maybe they go to a different university, maybe they already go to Imperial. If you want to live with them, you're totally at liberty to do that. You do not have to live in student halls. The plus side of this is that you get to choose more precisely where you live. The downside is that you don't really get to meet people as much. The only way you can meet people who aren't on your course is through societies. But most people would only recommend living in private accommodation in first year if you already know people who you really want to live with. Otherwise, just stick with student halls. It's much safer and loads of fun. So the Imperial website has loads of great resources on every single hall. It has room tours, prices, hall breakdowns of all the amenities in every room and in every hall. I really recommend you checking it out. I will link it below, of course. If you are moving into halls this year, good luck with your moving. I know it's kind of a weird time to be traveling to a new city or to a new country, but I wish you all so much luck. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you have any more questions for me, you can comment down below or you can message me on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye.